My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices, for God is my Savior. Uh, they say that uh, the land of America is the land of uh, beauty and a land of chances and opportunities, right? Uh, and we say uh, the land of Egypt is the land of saints and the land of wonders and the land of miracles. So what I will share with you uh, some miracles that have been happening lately because of some of the children that we live together uh, from villages. They were born uh, almost at the same time when we started the, the ministry. I didn't know them when they were born. And then God put us together when they became around uh, 10 until 20 years old. Some of them, uh, we gathered the children in camps uh, according to their uh, age groups. We eat together, we play together, we laugh together, we pray together, we cry together, we listen to their hopes and their problems. Thank you. So when I say they are my children, yes, they are. When they grew up, some of them joined the ministry as leaders because the one who knows the best how to heal is the one who has been wounded. Yes? So I'm learning from them what would be the best way for children their age. When they grow up, they wanted to have dreams, like all of you. We think of the future as a good dream and a vision and listen to God. And some of them, they wanted to travel to other countries to get more income so they can get married and have their own homes and uh, help their own families. And when they traveled, they didn't come back. What happened? It's part of our culture in Egypt. You find many people, they put tattoo like a cross, like a buna on his hand. And uh, seven of them were, uh, it was around Christmas time, so they wanted to go back to their families. Thirteen of them were in the same room, the big hall where they used to sleep. At the same time, they stopped the car that was taking the seven or two cars, and then they attacked the 13 together and put all of them in one place, like an uh, underground place, like a cave, and kept them for 40 days, almost 40 days, from the beginning of January, 2nd of January, until the 5th of February. And they gave them all, um, all kind of temptation. They said, we're going to let you get married or have uh, better jobs, have good income, have homes, everything you dream of. Just take this cross out. And then one of them named Gerges, he was encouraging all of them. Gerges had his fiancée waiting for him back home, so when he come back, they will get married. He was trying to encourage all his colleagues and friends, don't ever give up. Our God is the greatest. Our God is strong. After that, uh, 
they give them very hard time for uh, leaving them few days without any food or water. And none of them accepted to renounce his faith. In the last day, uh, they took them into the shore, the beach, and they gave each one of them a number. Like you are number one, number two, until 21. One in the middle saw them, and he, with his own free will, he was from Africa, he joined them. He said, me too, I am Christian. And went with them. So they became 21. Each one of them, they tied their arms at the back. They put each one dressed in an orange suit. And uh, each one has one who is responsible to take off his head. I think you can find it on the YouTube. Uh, it was so miraculous that the one who's doing that shoot everything and put it on the YouTube. So the whole world would know uh, this is the life of courage and conviction till the last breath. What happened? There was a guard whose responsibility was to stand and guard them for the whole month. He is from their country. And he was the one who had a vision during that time. He was standing not behind the camera, behind the man who's shooting with the camera. And he was the one who explained something that nobody else could explain. He was an eyewitness. He was standing there, and he said around 2, from 2 midnight until 3, they took them out on the shore to make a rehearsal. When the light start to, to come, they will uh, make the killing. The, uh, the floor start, started to be shaking, so they were scared. And then the leader of them said, make it quickly and fast. What he saw was this. He said, the first one who said number one, when he called his number, he saw a dragon coming out from the water, all black, and he wanted to attack the first one. At that moment, he saw a white horse coming from up and trying to defeat the dragon. At the same time, he saw behind him something like a huge eagle and white one. Probably it was an angel, but he said an eagle with huge wings. And he was coming on each one of them in turn. At that moment, after he took his head off, the number two, he saw the same vision for the number two. And then number three and four, all the way till the 21. At the end, he noticed that, like white eagles around the bodies, and the same bodies stood up again and became like all 
wearing white, and each one of them had white crown enlightened for each one of them. And then at the end, he saw special cloud coming to take all the spirits with the white eagles coming up and down, moving together, and they formed like a circle around the one who came on a white horse. And each one of them has been given a white horse and a white crown. And they all moved up until they disappear. At the same time, he himself fell down fainting. He said, I could not feel where I am until I found myself in the hospital. Please bring some Christians to pray over me. I cannot sleep for three nights and three days. The glory of that did not end it here. In the village, the families were very much crying for one and two days when we heard it. The third day, they said, we are celebrating because now we have a martyr who is interceding for us in heaven. What happened that when a mother lost two of her children in this, two of these boys were our children. She say, I miss you. And she sit in a corner and she put their photos and their dresses and belongings and the Bible. When she's sitting there, she found one of her sons coming and telling her, Mom, don't be sad. I am in a very good place. I want you to be happy for me. And she said, you didn't bring your other brother. She said, after a few minutes, the other brother came and she said, Yamma, Mommy, I'm here for you. Don't be sad. You should be proud of your boys. Come and see where we are. After that, one by one started to appear either in a dream or in real to their mothers and their families. The most important that after that, one of the neighbors had a tumor and she was about to go to the hospital to make an uh, operation. He appeared to her and put his hand on her tumor and the next day when she went to the hospital, they found it disappeared. We still have the doctor's report and the x-rays. Another one had to go to make an upper uh, heart surgery. Also one of them appeared to her and put her ha his hand on her and she didn't need the operation. Even the doctor witnessed it's a miracle. So they are, the spirit are around us everywhere. And I couldn't believe one day that I will have my own children to be martyrs in heaven. What an honor. Today I want to share with you something about the dream. When God gives you a dream, stick to it till the end, and you will see miracles. When God gives you a conviction, stick to it, because life is full of mystery. Heaven is full of secrets, and we need to learn in our life what is it, why God has put you and me on this earth. We don't choose where to be born or when to die. We don't choose where or when to go to heaven. But we do choose during our lifetime that there is a dream 
Am I fulfilling his dream when he created this life? I think now you are in the good age. When I was your age, I was dreaming all the time. <laughs> so I hope that you are doing something a little bit similar, that you have your own dreams. Dream to be a princess in heaven. The princess is the one who is the closest to the king, right? So try to be the closest from now. Dream to be the prince, whatever you face, some challenges here. Challenges are everywhere, but out of these challenges, you will be wise, you will be closer to God. So don't reject the challenges, accept it. When I first went to the poor areas in Egypt, I couldn't believe what I've seen. It was a great shock for me. And I was praying, God, why all this pain? These poor children, they sleep at night crying from hunger. Nobody is there to care for them. The answer was so clear. It's your turn to do something for them. They are my chance to be a better person. When we went to help them, we thought we want to give them a better life. Today and forever, I will witness they changed us to be better people. So they are our chance. They are the ones who are bringing blessings to our life. They are suffering, and take the blessing of anyone who's suffering. And then uh, I was teaching at the American University in Cairo. I always loved my students like I love you. I have my friends from them until today. And when I paid the first visit, I started uh, reading the Bible. Every day, I said, I will finish it until God will answer me why, why this is happening. It was so clear to me, leave the best student that you have at the American University. They are the elite of the society. And go to the poorest of the poor. Go to the lost and the least. And I couldn't believe that God could trust me with something like that. I was not prepared for that. I think until today, <laughs> I'm, I'm not worthy. Because among the poor, you can see God is hidden. So when I need to touch God, I touch a poor child. When I carry some of these children, I feel God's heart beating. When I listen to them, I feel God is whispering in my ears. I love all human. They are my creation. I am praying that the same way that God has blessed me, and I was so unworthy, that he will bless every human and every heart who could have a heart and mind for someone who needs you. I ask you, please, come and visit some of the poor areas, and your life will not be the same. I believe you, you are the heart of this world. You are a breath from God to this world. Your life is so precious. I 
cannot say you're a, you're a hero. You are much more than a hero. You are a heavenly creature. We all need to learn the language of heaven. We need to listen to God. We need to sing for him all the time and thank him and praise him. We need to, to see him, not with these eyes, the physical eyes, with our, the eyes of our hearts. One of the good saints who said, his name is uh, Saint Isaac of Syrian. He said, the one who could see himself and know himself is much better than the one who could see angels. Because this one could see with the physical eyes, and the other will see with his heart and spiritual eyes. They think Socrates, the philosopher, was the one who said, know yourself. He was not the one who invented. He saw it written in one of the temples in Greek, in Greece. And he took it as a theme of his life. But when you think of that, know yourself. You know your conviction. It's not what the people think of you. It's not you. It's not when someone is first coming to know you. It's not even your name. It's not your family. It's not your education. It's not your achievements. When I say you, is very, very deep. You go to yourself and spend time in silence and say, God, reveal to me what do you think of this life when you first created me? What do you want to achieve through this life? Because many times we are all human we are influenced by the people around us. If they think that I'm good, I think I'm good. It's not true. If they think and say you are beautiful, you think you are beautiful. They look from outside. But the reality of who you are is much, much, much than all of this. I always tell the young girls, if you find a young boy who's trying to say you're pretty, you are like a moon or something, smile and say, yes, I'm much more than that. <laughs> because this is the reality. You are much, much, much more than anyone could understand. And we need to spend time to enjoy who we are in the eyes of God. God is a spirit. So allow your spirit to come out and show the human that there is much, much more beauty in you than what they can see from outside. Even if you have a good way of thinking, you have a good brain. You know, I think uh, Nikola Tesla the one who created a lot of things here, he said, it was all in his brain before he put it down. I know your minds, you, especially here in this place, you must have a good brain. You have a good way of thinking. But remember, you are even much more. You didn't even go deeper to know how precious you are. You are a spirit that will live forever in the body. But people would look at you from outside. So please don't be, don't waste your time or energy of what people say about you. 
Listen to God, what He says about you. When you start to have life, a good life, to serve the Lord, you spend time in silence, you spend time reading, because they say readers are leaders. So read as much as you can and think. If someone like Warren Buffer, who was one of the richest in our time, he used to spend five hours every day by himself, either reading or reflecting on what he reads. So how much more do we need to spend? And then write, take note. Even small things, but after a year or 10 years or 20 or 30 or 50 years, you will look at your reading and you say, ah, I was so naive at that time. <laughs> <laughs> but you will smile. Number two, do something good every day until it becomes part of you. But when you start this way, the enemy will not be happy. So what do you think he will do? He will attack you, will try to attack you. When this door is open with trials on you, don't be afraid. You know why? Because your father is great, the greatest. Nothing can come nearby you without his permission. And after that, if you stick and you don't be afraid and you continue to do good, the grace will come upon you. And when you keep this for some time, the Holy Spirit will fill you with wonders. Now the last thing I want to share with you, and then I will ask some of my friends to come here with me. Please try to add value to your life every day. Add value to your life every day. Do you know the running water, when you look at, you cannot see your face. But when it stopped like well, you can see clearly. I would like to encourage you to stop running from one thing to another, as we are all busy, and start winning. Stop running and start winning. Go for the result. Think smart. What are you achieving? So number one, you have time by yourself every day. Now the two things that all of us could do. The first one, Set your mind on things above by trying to learn something new every day. Don't miss a day. At the end of one year, you will know how many new things. 365, you become good. So try to learn something new every day, even a habit of writing, even a habit of underlining a verse from the Bible or studying more about something. But just have something new in your life every day. And learn to be positive. Please, learn to be positive. This is the key for the real life, I think. Um, there is a 
uh, a word in, uh, in Aramic language, the language of Jesus. When he was on earth, he used to uh, speak Aramic. Um, a word saying that uh, Abra Kadabra. Do you know it? Do you know it? Yes? How many knew that? So we want all to know it. It says that whatever you say, you become. If I say I'm a winner, I am a winner. If I say I am princess for my godly father, I am. Whatever you speak, you will be. So we need to learn this word now. Abra Kadabra. Can we say it? Abra Abra Kadabra. Abra Kadabra. Some people, they don't want to learn. <laughs> so we keep them here until they learn. <laughs> So let's say it together and always remember. Abra Kadabra. Abra Kadabra. Abra Kadabra. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Always remember you're knowing something new every day. Whatever you say about yourself, you will be. So say that you are great. Say that you are a hero. Say that you are much more than that. You are beautiful. You are a gift, a great gift to the whole world. You are. The last thing, give something every day. Give. If I don't have any money, I came this trip with not one single dollar, not one single penny. I thank God that he was providing. I have my friends here, they got me food, they got me everything. But you know, I was still want to be myself. I need to give something every day. So take anything, think of anything, even a good smile, even a good word, but give something to someone every day and be a blessing to someone, okay? So learn and give. The more you give, the more you win. I promise. I'm sure you have all tried it. Who oh, Jesus, he said, give me, give me something and see if not, I'm going to open heaven for you. Yes? So give because this is part of every Christian character. This is Jesus in you who's giving. May God bless you. And never, never, never give up, please. No matter what you face. You know why? Quitters never win. <laughs> but winners never quit. And you are winners. God bless you. Biola University prepares Christians to think biblically about everything, from science to business to education and the arts. Learn more at biola.edu.